What's up guys, this is Ferdin here with another After Effects tutorial which was requested by somebody <coughs> which can't remember the name, um, sorry, but basically what the tutorial is is going to be like a heatwave effect, so if you've seen my military tribute animation you'll obviously see this scene. If you haven't seen the video please go and check it out, that'd be good to get all the views, likes and all that good stuff as, as much as I can get it, that'd be great. Basically, <coughs> this is just a rendered Cinema 4D animation. Um, now the one one thing is missing is the little heat wave bit coming from the back of the aircraft. So obviously when you see on like films or or just in jet, general life really, uh, when you see a jet engine, the heat from the engines produce a heat wave, um, which will end up distorting sort of the background view or whatever's behind that. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like I can't explain it, so I'm not going to bother. Otherwise I'll just fail miserably. So basically I'm just going to teach you how to do that effect. <coughs> now, I, I just learned to do this myself actually. I was just, I've, I, I knew the effect but didn't know how to properly use it so I just had to test it and then just add some extra things in to sort of make it look nice. But this is how I done it. I added an adjustment layer. Um, let me just call this one color correction. I actually will delete that because we've not even got it on. Um, so this adjustment layer will be the heat wave. Um, basically, once we've got our heat wave uh, adjustment layer all good and ready, you want to add a turbulent displace effect onto it. So you go to click on the heat wave, go to effect, distort, and then turbulent displace. And then you see here it displaces it slightly. The first thing you want to do is just increase the complexity up to 10. And now you can see that this is very, very distorted. And then you can start playing around with your your amount and size. Now the size I brought down to about 50, uh, 50 I thought. But the amount I turned up to about 100. Mm, yeah, nah. 50-50. Oh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll turn that off and we'll just mask it out first. So let me come to like a place within the footage where I can start masking out and making it look nice. So we'll come to this frame. We'll turn it on. No, sorry, we'll turn it off. And what we'll do is we'll just get the pen tool and we'll just mask out this area. Just need to adjust that slightly because I've done that a bit wrong. There we go. And the reason we're choosing this area is because that is where the heat wave will be left. And if we turn the turbulent displace on, we can see that there is a heat wave effect. Um, there's a cut off edge here. If you don't want the cut off edge, which is high, well, you know, if you want to make the thing realistic, you wouldn't have that on. You just turn the mask feather. Uh, if you don't know how to get to that, you can either just go to the masks and just drop down and go mask feather, or if you just click on the um, adjustment layer and click M for mouse, you know, um, twice. If you hit that twice, and then um, it comes up with the mask options. And then I just usually put the feathers to 30 pixels. That's relatively good enough. You can do it to about 50 if you wish. I'll leave it at 50 for this one actually. And as you can see, it blends in nicely. You've got the turbulent displacement and it blends into the normal picture. Now, once we've got that looking all right, now I, I'm happy with this distortion because it's not too much and it's not too little. And that is 50, like amount 50, size 50, and complexity 10. And that is all you pretty much need to do for the uh, for these settings. Now all we need to do is just animate it because it's going to be the same throughout. Um, so first of all what we're going to do is sorry I just need to go back to that frame which is about here we need to just mask out what the position of this heat wave um, and you just easily done just go to the mask path and check that keyframe and what, what's that uh, sorry what's that uh, what I don't know mix some words up what that has done um, is basically where this mask is we can now animate this and that will animate the way we want it to. So from this we'll come back a frame till the plane's just left the ground which is about here. Double click on the mask, size that down to about here 
and pop that at just at the bottom of the aircraft. Um, although it will still be showing here, what you want to do now is click on the heat wave, click T for Tango, and hit an opacity and cha uh, sorry, change that to naught. So hit the keyframe and change the opacity to naught. So it's invisible basically. Then you want to move a couple of frames forward and change it to 100. So as we can see here, the heat wave comes. I mean, we haven't. We still need to play around with it first. And now we just go forward till the end. Size it up. A, oops. Size it up a bit more, and move that up. And then move it to the end, and then move that slightly up as well. Don't worry about that because we're going to start adjusting the opacity of this as well. But as you, I spotted an error. As I come here, the distortion is overlaying the um, what do you call it, the aircraft. So if I go back to this mask path keyframe, oh no, here we go. So we've got here's the keyframes for the mask path. If we just come in the middle of both of these two, and what we can do is we can easily just size that down so it still remains below the aircraft. I mean, if it still looks a bit funny, like here, I'll do the same. Double click bring that down below the aircraft and I can just scroll through now and, and make sure that the mask follows this relatively close and then once the aircraft is pretty much disappearing from the off screen then you want to go back to the opacity hit a keyframe at 100 scroll forward and then about there turn it to back, back to naught so then it fades out because it's not going to stay there forever now, now we've got the effect on, and we've got the uh, sorry, the mask sorted out, so it appears in, it appears out. There is no actual effect on the distortion yet. Obviously, the fact that the image is moving that it creates a, a distortion itself, but there's no actual animation on the distortion, which we're going to do now. So, all we need to do is pretty much go to the first opacity keyframe because that's when when it's going to be like available pretty much, or visible should I say and we just want to check the evolution and then simple enough go to the end keyframe on the opacity and I usually turn it to about three and that's basically three times 360 degrees so it's going to be 360, 720, 1080 I think that's right yeah so it's going to be 1080 degrees um, you can either pop that in there, it'll just snap to three times not, uh, just bit, save a bit of time, just put three. And what that's done now is that has animated the heat wave itself. So if I just render that out, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I might want to just increase that opacity a bit. something not right about it when it first takes off there we go so come in, the, in between these two keyframes and bring that down to the bottom of the aircraft come in between these it's just a bit of playing around really just making sure your mask is relatively in the same place now this plate this is where it gets a bit funny as well there we go, that should do. So if I re render that out, basically what we've got, you can actually, what would make sense is to have the opacity a bit longer coming in because it just suddenly appears. There we go. So if we play it again, so the aircraft is coming, and as it lifts off the ground, then the heat wave begins to appear. And obviously, you don't want to keep the mask wider than the aircraft you want to keep it within sort of the width or does it look a bit unrealistic because the heat wave's just been created by the aircraft so if it's wider than the aircraft I mean obviously it might distort something like you know slightly outer but if you do it too far then it's gonna look a bit weird um, so that's basically how I've done it guys um, like I said I, I did try and make things as clear as possible but you know um, but it's an easy effect I mean I did it in about two minutes but obviously this tutorial I have to explain everything 
So it can easily be done. Oh, and another thing I added, just to quick put that in actually, I added a effect blur, CC vector blur. And I added the amount up slightly. I mean five. There we go. And what that does is that just doesn't make it although the distortion is really sharp, what I do is I blur those sharp sharp edges so it still has a nice sharp distortion to it but there's no sharp uh, edges if that makes sense as you can see here all these sharp edges when you add the blur on it just blurs them slightly and it distorts them as well um, and that's how I done that distortion effect so I hope you like it guys please like and comment um, and I'll see you in the next video peace